Stay tuned until the end of the episode. Me and him are gonna break down squat snatches, squat clean thrusters, set expectations, and give you some tips as to how fast you can go on this work. Three, two, three, throw down! Hit us with that juicy moo moo! On this week's start out. Hey. Whoa! Okay. <laughs> <laughs> on, this, <laughs> <laughs> on this week's start out, we have Crispy Kristen demo the workout. Crispy. We've got <laughs> squat snatches and squat clean thrusters. We release this workout right here on YouTube every Thursday at 1 p.m. Our first training cycle for the 2022 competitive CrossFit season just started. For more information and to join, head to trainingthinktank.com. Mia, what's the workout? This week's throwdown is a five minute AMRAP of three squat snatches and three squat clean thrusters at 155 for the guys, 105 for the girls. Go ahead and get on the leaderboard by looking in the description down below. There's a register link there. Also, you'll find a movement or you will find movement standards and a warm up for this workout. This week's demo athlete is Christian. He has surpassed the intermediate division and he is now an RX athlete. He's developing his skills. He's actually got a bet with me that if he makes the game, it's games in three years I have to grow my hair out. If he doesn't, he's got to shave his head. I mean, can you grow your hair out though? It'd be sloppy. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go see this workout. Three, two, one, zero. Five minutes of barbell cycling. Yeah, this reminds me of the old school open workout with, what was that, squat clean and jerk? Except yeah. squat snatches. Yeah, oh yeah, <laughs> Just... that was when I was still competing. <laughs> yeah, that was a long time ago. Yeah. That's a tough workout though looks super snappy and fast. This catches up to you quick, so I think having a cadence in mind, I mean, some people are just gonna wanna bank time at the beginning, but it's five minutes of doing either a squat snatch or a squat clean. Yeah, if you think about this like a one mile run for time, you're not gonna sprint your first 400. So it's not necessarily that you have to move any slower than him, because he might be on a good pace for himself right now. He just finished those first six reps in 30 seconds. I don't know what he'll finish overall, but I'm guessing he won't be able to sustain that pace. That'd be the equivalent of sprinting your first 400 in a mile. So just kind of think about always the duration of the workout and how you can manage your energy appropriately for that period of time. Yeah, you also have to think about the maybe the fatigue points that you may have. So for me, I would be thinking more about my shoulders because you're going from snatch, which is holding it overhead, to the squat clean thruster. My legs are usually pretty enduring, but maybe for you, it's a, just too many squats. So it's kind of thinking about how do I need That's to manage that? Go. This workout? Yeah, yeah, just the setting up for every rep. Yeah. Um, that would definitely start blowing up. So that second six reps took 42 seconds. There's some little technical things too. I, Christian's a tall guy, you can't always tell on camera, but he's probably another three inches taller than me. He's probably yeah. like 6'1 or 6'2. So he, the depth of his squat is kind of close. And that's just like, these are these little things that you need to work on at this level to make sure that when you get into qualifiers, you're pushing the depth as much as you can to make sure that the reps are good. Whereas somebody who might be smaller with short legs and no tension might be able to just drop in. So it's kind of like an individual prescription you need to find for yourself. Yeah, when you have long femurs like him, it yeah. is not easy, yeah, yeah. but it is something to practice, like foot width, maybe widening out or narrowing, depending yeah. on how your hips move. So those are all things you have to practice. And definitely in qualifiers, using things like VersaLifts to your advantage to yes. just make that a little bit smoother. So for him, what started to break down was his press um, on the thrusters, and you'll see that as we go. Yeah, you could see that last one was a little bit slower. But again, I mean, you're holding the barbell overhead for the snatch and then you're going right back into a press. I mean, it's, a, it's very shoulder intensive. Yeah, it's just a lot of a lot of just like postural endurance too, because like you're keeping the bar overhead in both mo movements essentially. Set three took 54 seconds, so he's dropping off about 10 seconds per set and we're already at the halfway mark now. So 31 seconds for the first six, 42 seconds for the second six, and then 54 seconds for the third six. So maybe starting out on a 40 or 45 second uh, per six reps pace would have been better off for him, something like that. So a question for you guys, are there any other options other than doing singles? Like would you ever tell someone that, hey, start with three touch and go snatches and then singles on the thrusters or vice versa? Uh, yeah, I think I the only think time so. I would tell people to use touch and go is right near the end of the clock yeah. if you have the energy. I think it's just too much of a risk. It's so, That would make it so grippy. Yeah. yeah. 
One of the things that I would tell someone that is, wants to be competitive in this workout, which I know that Christian's doing a really good job, but not stepping away like he is. He's taking three steps back every single time and coming back into it. And look, you're, you may have to do that to take your rest breaks. For someone that wants to be super competitive, it's like you drop the bar and you stay right over it where your feet don't move or maybe just yeah. a little quarter step back and then right back yeah. into the bar every time. Yeah, there's the difference between people who are treating this as a barbell cycling workout and Christian's kind of in the middle where it is barbell cycling, but he is close to failure on the lockout of the thruster, so he has to keep that in mind. Yeah, so the the 31 second pace that he held in the beginning, that was essentially what an elite athlete pace would be. They would just sustain it for a lot longer. The difference, I think, would be if he were holding that initial pace, but instead of stepping back and coming, he just took an extra second or second or so between his lifts early on. One thing too, mobility-wise, you notice, um, and this is something I think a lot of people have to do. I have to let go of my hands to come into a really good front rack, and that makes it really hard to make this transition. Mm -hmm. He has that same type of thing, and you kind of have to roll your wrist under as you're pressing to kind of get more stable in the press. It's a little technical thing that you might not always realize because when you're doing thrusters, you can have a separate grip, but when you're transitioning it from the floor, from a squat clean into a thruster, it is a little bit different technically. The other thing I would think about for him is using your hips a little bit more. Like I know that the legs are gonna get fatigued, but maybe it's once you're about halfway up, kind of start speeding up your hips to get the barbell off your shoulders for the thruster portion, as opposed to almost doing a strict press, which you know, inevitably will end up failing. Oh, he pushed pace there. He's <laughs> yep. got 10 seconds left. See if he can hit this. He's I love how he's aware. looking at the clock. Yeah, yeah. He knows. <laughs> Three seconds left. Last rep. Ah! Aye. Aye, Christian. <laughs> so he completed five rounds plus two reps. Nice job, man. Solid work. <sighs> oh, the war's fucking from my left. It's like so short, but at the same time, Jesus. Awesome. How'd it go? It gets heavy, like pretty fast. Like second, third round, my legs were already like cramping from the squat snatches. So it's like you end up doing like strict presses or push press at the end of the cluster. Pretty fun though. It was in the back. Let's break down this workout. <laughs> All right, this workout, three squat snatches, three squat clean thrusters. At this weight, I think the difficulty of each of those movements is the same. Now, I know there's gonna be some people that are watching in the audience that might be great at squat clean thrusters and not at snatches, or great at snatches and not at squat clean thrusters, but just for sake of simplicity and breaking down the workout and setting some expectations, I'm gonna say one round of this workout is just six reps at that weight. So when you watch Christian do the workout, he hit 32 total reps, which means he was moving at a pace of about nine seconds per rep when you average it out. His initial pace though was five seconds per rep because he had six reps done. He had a whole round done in 30 seconds. So that means his initial pace was 60 total reps. I think that an elite individual games athlete would struggle to be able to hold that pace. Now, as you go through this workout, there might always be some deterioration, but you wanna try to get it to some sort of a linear pace across. And if you get three minutes and 30 seconds into the workout or four minutes into the workout and you find that your pace was too slow, then you can start to pick it up and use your speed at the end. But I would definitely recommend setting some sort of a linear pace. And this can be some sort of a barometer for you. So Christian is pretty strong. He was moving that barbell pretty well in the beginning. His press started to get limited. So maybe that's too much for you and you wanna lower that number or you think that your barbell cycling is better because you're a semifinal level athlete and and you think you might be able to hold somewhere in between that 32 and 60 seconds. So the goal would be to set some sort of a time clock and literally just keep a rhythmic cadence of singles all the way through. And if you have a finishing kick, kick in the end. Some tips on this workout specifically, if your snatch is less than 185 or 125, I would say that you should scale the weight of this workout to something that allows you to get somewhere in this 30 to 60 rep range. So that way you can actually practice barbell cycling. 
Obviously, you still need to get stronger if you want to participate in the sport, but for sake of getting a good stimulus of the throwdown, I think it would make more sense to scale. If you have a weakness in one of these movements, like I talked about in the beginning of this segment, then I would say set up two barbells. Set one up that's at your working weight, that's RX to the workout, and one that maybe is a little bit less to allow you to cycle back and forth and practice doing that cycling under fatigue. Some other focus points, your setups. We talked about that a little bit with Christian and figuring out how do you get set up on the bar really quickly and the same at every single rep. Other things, posture between reps. I'm not saying that hands on the knees resting posture is bad and that standing up tall is good, but be mindful of it and try to be deliberate in your postures and stay discipline to your rest breaks in your posture. So think about if you're saying, hey, I wanna lift on the seven seconds, you don't wanna step back and put your hands on your knees for seven seconds. You want, maybe you get to put your hands on your knees for three seconds and take two breaths, then step up to the bar, and the time between those lifts would actually be seven seconds. So be very deliberate with your setups, your posture, and be disciplined with your time. That's all I got. It's a relatively simple, relatively short, one barbell type workout, so get after it. Be mindful of your reps per second and have a good time. Peace. Hold on, redo that? Was that all the way turned up? Yep. It was? Yep. A little quiet today. Oh, I pressed the wrong button. <laughs> Fuck me. Let's <laughs> do that again. Let's leave that one in there. <laughs> Damn it, I missed the sound key this time. <laughs> and take 18,000. It's a wrap, you know what I'm saying? Your boy Project Pata in this thing, man. Hey, look, man, thank y'all for watching Train Think Tank YouTube channel. Y'all hit that motherfucking subscribe button, you know what I'm saying? So y'all go ahead, man. Thank y'all for watching the channel, you know what I'm saying? Hit that motherfucking subscribe button. Let it be known, let it be known, let it be known, you know what I'm saying? Pata!